Hi, I'm Dora the Time Traveler and this is my Lifestyle Time Travel blog. Today we are talking about 5 incredible ancient artifacts. All of these artifacts are completely incredible. Some of them seem that they could be before their time. Some are simply products of ingenious minds and some are extremely, extremely beautiful. So let's go to our list. Number five, Roman Swiss army knife. If you think that the Swiss were the one to invent this gadget, you'd be wrong. They existed even during the Roman times. This item is from the 3rd century AD. It is a folding eating gadget made from silver and iron. So there is a hinge that keeps this gadget in place. So you can fold out an item you want to use, like you want to eat some steak, so you take the fork. And then when you're finished with that and you want to eat some soup and you want to use a spoon, then you fold the spoon out and you put that fork away like in a regular Swiss army knife. And the material that this item was made from silver speaks of the wealth of its owner, so that it was either a really rich soldier or a rich traveler that had to occasionally eat on the road and he wanted to make sure that everybody knew that he was upper class. So this Roman Swiss army knife has a spoon, a fork, an iron knife that eroded, a pick, a spatula, and a spike. All of these gadgets were used for eating. You can use a spike to extract meat from snails or from shells, and you can use a spatula to scrape the remains from your bowl. So up until now, only three of these were found. Two are in private collections, and one, this one you see over here, is from Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. And it is their star item. Number four. Neolithic ovens with a chimney. So ovens appeared during the Neolithic, not before that, and in the early days of the ovens during the pre-Pottery Neolithic B at the site of Jarmo in Syria, some interesting ovens were found. So ovens found at that site were a bit peculiar. They were large, made from mud plaster, which is usual for ovens, and they were located in a room next to a wall. Seems regular, right? So the oven was accessed from another room through an opening. And sometimes that was located even outside of the house. And between them there was, of course, a partition wall. And the chimney was built into that partition wall. So between the opening and the oven. So they were probably used for bread baking. Something like this. You wanted to bake a bread, so you went into one room, you took the kindling and you put it through the hole in the wall into the oven. So when the fire started burning and the smoke started coming out from the oven, it was trapped into a chimney in that partition wall and it went outside of the house. Then when the oven was hot enough, you could put bread in it. What an innovative way of thinking. Maybe it was impractical and practical at the same time, because after this we do not see ovens like this. Yes, it took a lot of space, but also the houses were smoke-free. And ovens like this were found at the sites of Mataran, Tepeguran and Yarintepe. Number 3. Lycurgus cup. This is a color-changing Roman glass cup. And it comes from the 4th century AD, probably from Alexandria or Rome. And it is displayed at the British Museum. It is really interesting because it changes colors depending on where the light is hitting it. If it's hitting it from the behind, then this glass cup is red. And if it's hitting it from the front, then the glass is green. But of course, there is explanation for this. So first, let's talk about this cup. It is a Roman glass cage cup or diatretum, which means that it seems like there are two parts of this cup, one interior and the exterior decorated part. Exterior decorated part is usually in geometric shapes, and these cups, even those simpler ones, are extremely, extremely rare. But this one goes even step further because this outer part actually represents anthropomorphic figures and floral motifs. And that anthropomorphic figure is the mythological king Lycurgus, 
who tried to kill one of followers of Dionysus, Ambrosia. But uh, she turned into wine and she wrapped around him, so she eventually killed him. And on the other side of this cup, we can see Dionysus and two of his followers. And these gilded bronze rim and foot were added during the 1800s, so they are not original part of this cup. And let's talk about that color changing element. So in this glass that was used for the manufacturing of this cup, there were nanoparticles of gold and silver. Probably they ended up there by accident. And when the light hits this glass at a certain angle, those nanoparticles absorb light, so the glass seems red. And there are ongoing studies and experiments where people are trying to replicate this technology. Number two, Aeneas hydraulic telegraph. So Aenea Tacticus lived in Greece during the 4th century BC and he wrote the Greek art of war and he was specialized in military communication. So before him Greeks used fire to signal between different groups, but with fire you cannot signal the exact meaning of the message, you can just alert someone. And then Tacticus had a different idea. He invented the first hydraulic telegraph. So this action was performed between two different groups of people which all knew the rules. So with his method they could pass pre-arranged messages with predetermined sentences like the enemy's coming. So how did it work? So each group had an identical container equally filled with water. At the bottom of that container there was a plug, but in the middle of that container there was a rod with points. And for each point there was a predetermined message. So when one group had to pass message to another group, they first signaled with fire. They used the torch, they raised the torch to signal the other team that there is an incoming message. And then the other group confirmed also with fire that they are ready to receive the message. And then the first group also signaled with fire when to remove the plug. So they removed the plug at the same time and then the water started diminishing to point to a certain message that they wanted to pass. And when the water came to the message that they wanted to convey, then the first group put back the plug and immediately signaled with fire to the other group to do the same. So the second group put back the plug as well and then they read the message. First formation, on the line, retreat, retreat. Maybe you can see the enemy coming, but you cannot see the Spanish Inquisition because nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. But with this method you could also pass multiple messages, not just one. So if you want to pass another message you just redo the process. Number one, Antikythera mechanism. This is an ancient Greek hand-powered orrery famous as the first computer. It was found in an ancient Greek shipwreck next to the coast of the island Antikythera in Greece in 1901. And at first they thought that it was just a lump of bronze. But after cleaning and restoration they saw something spectacular. They found mechanical gears. And this genius mechanism was inside a wooden casing. So it probably had 37 meshing bronze gears, which enabled this device to follow the movements of the sun, moon to predict eclipses and to model irregular orbit of the moon. The researchers think that some parts are missing so that this device could also follow the orbit of classical planets, which were planets that were known during the antiquity, which are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, together with Sun and Moon. So some dated to 87 BC, others to 205 BC or between 150 and 100 BC, but either way it was before the shipwreck which was between 70 and 60 BC. So at the front there is a fixed ring dial that points to 12 zodiac signs and each of the signs is divided in 30 degree sections like a zodiac wheel chart today. So the outer part of this ring was movable and it was divided well some say into 365 others to 354 intervals. So the first option would symbolize 365 day Egyptian calendar. 
but if we take the other option into consideration, then this ring would represent a lunar calendar. So in this dial, you can see the position of the sun at a certain point, and maybe even other planets. So you could have probably used it to make a birth chart. And in the back, there are five circular dials two large and three smaller, and they each represent a different calendar. One of the smaller ones was calculating the timing of different Panhellenic athletic games, like the Olympic Games. So this complicated device seems like something from a different time period, but actually it was from the ancient Greece. And if you want to see this spectacular device, you can go to the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. So at first I was about to film another video about architecture, and this morning I saw an Instagram post uh, about this Swiss army knife, this Roman Swiss army knife, so I decided to scratch that video and do this one instead. So I really hope you like it. <laughs> uh, and write down in comments which item was your favorite. And you know what to do. Support us, subscribe, like, share, send to all. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!